everyone welcome back to another video hope you're having a lovely day and today we're just going to be doing some very chill bullet journaling i had, haven't done a sort of bullet journaling video since the new year and i don't think i'll be doing any monthly spreads this year sort of on the regular but i will be doing some chill little bullet journaling videos like this because i find them very relaxing so in today's video i'm just going to be making my March bullet journal spreads and just chatting with you guys. As you may know, I am using my Archer and Olive A5 dotted notebook for this year in 2022. And yeah, I'm just using a mixture of different supplies, all of them that you can see on screen or in the description box below. I always link everything that I use so you guys can check them out if you'd like. So yeah, I just did a cute little title page over here, March in the, in the first page, and I'm doing this sort of style that I did for February, but just with a different color palette because I was such a fan of how it, my spreads turned out in February with this sort of like gradient calligraphy bubble letter sort of style. And yeah, I, I decided to do it again, but with my sort of favorite colors, which is all this green teal color palette, and I decided to do that for March again. So as you can see, I'm just using a range of different tones of this teal color, and they just keep getting darker and darker the further down the letters I go. And I'm using a darker fine liner to outline the text as well as giving it a little line drop shadow. And this is pretty much the style or the theme, so to say, for this month. I haven't been doing like any crazy themes recently, anything too time consuming because I have been quite busy and I just know that I wouldn't have time to keep it up for the whole month. So instead of doing elaborate themes, as I said in my bullet journal setup for this year, I'm going to be doing more so like color palette themes or a specific little doodle that I can do as that's a little bit more uh, achievable for me, I think. So yeah, once I did my little drop shadow with just a line, I was really happy with how it looked. It looks like uh, almost like a graffiti almost, like a little cool graphic typography. I don't know, I'm really like, I really like how it looks. And I wanted to make it look even more sort of graphic styly, so I went in and actually added some little pattern lines to the very, very bottom of the title. And I think this added some really cool texture to it, and I'm very happy with it. Of course, I decorated the title page with a bunch of little sparkles everywhere. And yeah, then it was time to do my monthly spreads. Which again, very simple. Um, I got a, qu a question in one of my bullet journal videos from uh, recently. And someone asked if I don't get bored of having the same type of spreads all the time, i.e. my habits and expenses trackers and my monthly spreads. And honestly, not really, because my bullet journal is kind of my productivity lifeline. I really need it to be as functional as possible and if that takes away the possibility to be creative with the spreads then that's absolutely fine with me because I just I, I go by the philosophy of if if it ain't broke don't don't fix it. Wait, is that how it goes? <laughs> don't change a winning formula I guess is what I'm trying to say and if I find that something is working well for me then I'm just not gonna really change it unless I feel like it needs a change and over the years I have been bullet journaling for like five years now I have sort of found what spreads and what type of spreads work best for me and kind of go hand in hand with the way that I get to be productive so that's why you probably see a lot of the same spreads over and over again. It's because I find I found which ones I really like and which ones I'm used to using the most. Plus, I find change very scary, so I like to stay within my comfort zone and my bullet journal is my comfort place because I know that's where I can plan everything. So again, another reason why I like to keep it nice and safe. 
so yeah for my monthly spread here i just did a very simple calendar with a little drop shadow of course and then over on the right i'm going to be doing my this month to do list area and my youtube video planner list as well and of course i just wrote out march again just in the smaller version over at the top again with the same sort of style and the same color palette and then proceeded to draw in my sort of placeholders for the titles for my two blocks on the right because I was having some issues getting them looking any way that I actually liked so I ended up in the end you'll see later just covering them completely with my Archer and Olive Acrylograph pen and redoing it <laughs> completely on top. Yeah, that's why I love acrylograph pens because they are sort of paint pens. Well, they are paint pens, so they will just cover anything <laughs> and they're very, very opaque. So <laughs> they're good for covering up mistakes. So yeah, I filled in all my empty little spots with some more sparkles in this beautiful blue color. And then I felt kind of extra. And as you saw maybe in my January spread from earlier in the year, I did a bunch of these like swirly shapes as my theme in purple last time, but I wanted to bring that back a little bit. So I got this beautiful teal colored pen from my Zebra Mild Liners brush set pack and just basically went to town on a lot of the empty bits and added some cool little swirlies <laughs> and because it's quite like a, a faint color like a light teal i feel like it didn't distract too much from the main essential page bits so i was happy with it And yeah, as you can see here, I just went in with a sort of teal color that I have from my Archer and Olive Acrylograph pen collection and went over the title squares because I really wasn't happy with how they looked and just went over with a darker green color later and wrote out the titles properly. And I was a lot happier with how it looked because then I could match it to the rest of my spreads. And yeah, with all that done, I went over to my next double spread, which was my habits and my expenses trackers. And I have actually been in recent months been adding in my mood tracker in on my habits tracker page just to keep everything sort of in the same place. I sometimes if if I you know make space for it in my monthly spreads, I'll put in my mood tracker there. But if I'm already tracking my habits, I might as well also track my mood on the same page. So I have been putting them all on the same page. So I'll, on the very far left of the page, I will make a big old rectangle down to the bottom. And that is my mood tracker for the month. So as you can see, I'm just using my Arteza fine liners to write out the titles and do the outlines for my calligraphy bubble letter titles that I'm doing a lot of this month. Yeah, I'm just using a bunch of different colors around blue and green and I have a lot of pens in that sort of color range so I really had a lot to work with. It is my favorite color and my favorite area of, of, of colors so it is definitely really nice to use all of my, all of my collections of teals. <laughs> So I just went in and colored in my titles, of course did my little drop shadows to make them really pop, and then it was time to do my actual trackers. So I just outlined the big old rectangle around my mood tracker and uh, for my mood tracker I just did like a, a gradient of different colors that would represent my mood so it goes from dark to light up at the top and those kind of represent the happy, sad and 
meh face, I guess. <laughs> and then of course, route out all the days of the month down to the bottom of the page. How this works, if you are new here, every day I will put a little dot or a little rectangle or cross or whatever, wherever I feel like my mood fits on that day. And then at the end of the month, I'll have like a little nice graph and chart. So yeah, then on the rest of the page, I put down some little title background rectangles and places for me to write down the days of the month. And I did six different habit trackers. So I did one for eating veggie. I feel like I've been eating veggie a lot recently because both my flatmate who we cook a lot for each other is veggie and also my partner is veggie. So <laughs> I've been eating veggie a lot. And then, um, yeah, just the usual trackers I do. And then I'm also doing like a sort of an inhaler, asthma inhaler tracker this month for my doctor just to check up on some stuff. So I decided to put that down as one of my habit trackers. It just fit in really nicely here with the rest of them. And yeah, then I went in with a fine liner again and just added a little drop shadow to all of my title square backgrounds and did little circles for every single day of every monthly tracker for these trackers and yeah it's a lot of work but <laughs> it just looks so cute when some of them are filled in and some, some of them aren't. So for the next page it was my expenses tracker and yeah again this is the one that my ride or die I haven't changed in so so long it's always the same it's just a simple table with my money coming in and my money coming out and the description for what that transaction was and this is a very easy way for me to do my work expenses at the end of the month that then makes doing my taxes as a freelancer just so much easier every year. I know it's, it seems like a very small and annoying task, but in the end, it just amounts to reducing my headaches by so much every year. <laughs> I, I use this spread probably the most every month. And yeah, just decorated any empty little bits with some stars, of course, little blue sparkles. And then proceeded to actually draw out the table. And I also, of course, used a teal, sort of light teal shade to do my row highlights. I usually do these in gray on any other spread, but I thought since I've got this light teal color, it would look really nice. And what I just do is I just color in every other row so that it's easier for me to track my, my rows when I'm looking at the grid. I just think it, it looks really cool and professional and it helps me out. And then to match my spread to my monthly spreads, I went in with my little teal brush pen from Zero Mildliner and did all the little swirlies around the pages. And this is just a really nice way to fill in all the extra little gaps that I didn't fill in with any of my actual important things. <laughs> And it just ties both of the pages together when I make a swirl go from one page to the next. I just think it looks more like a double spread as opposed to two separate spreads. My next double spread, you know, is my brain dump. It is where I write lists for everything in my life and plan any random thing that doesn't really need a full spread for itself. This is normally where I plan out like YouTube things and my new Patreon that I'm launching soon. This is where I'm going to be doing a lot of random planning for that. Yeah, just any old thing. So I'm, again, as you might expect, writing out the title in the same theme as the rest of the titles I've been doing and then just having some fun coloring it in. I honestly had so much fun with this theme, probably why I did it two months in a row because it was just a really nice like coloring in day for me just coloring them in making gradients with different kinds of pens from different brands it's just really fun seeing them all work together 
So I then went in and obviously did my little drop shadow with my fine liner. It is such a simple little thing that makes such a difference, I think, in these titles. And of course, the little blue sparkles. Couldn't miss out on those. And then finally, I just use my little teal brush pen to add some little swirlies in the corners of the pages. And I just always love doing this on my brain dump pages because it kind of just frames the double page and kind of creates a little, you know, border for it. And of course, it makes it look a little bit less plain. <laughs> and cha da! Time for my final double spread, which is just my first weekly spread of the month. And as I said, I am very, very busy at the moment this year, especially at the beginning of the year. So I definitely have been doing a lot of double spreads in my bullet journals just because of space. So this is why I'm doing it again this month. March is a very, very busy month for me this year. It's so much happening, just so much happening. And it, all very exciting things, but I do need a lot of space to plan out. <laughs> these things that are happening before I get overwhelmed. So I'm just writing out the month of March over there on the top left corner. And this is also where I'm going to write what week it is, which is the week of the 28th to the 6th. And yeah, this again, it's all little things that probably don't need to be here, but they help me in sort of like grounding myself in, in reminding myself of wh where I am in the year uh, <laughs> and in the month. So I like to just have all the info there in case I need it. Again, just kind of coloring in my calligraphy bubble letters with my different colored teals. And then I just did a little tiny little calendar underneath this little title. And again, this just really helps me see the whole month in general and not just forget which, which week of the month I'm in. And I just usually highlight which week I'm at every week and that just it, it kind of helps me just locate myself time-wise. It's very easy for me to forget what day it is, what month it is, what's happening, so I need all the, the geolocators <laughs> for what time it is and what, what time of the year it is at all times. So then I went in with the same acrylograph pen from Archer and Olive that I used for my title square backgrounds on my monthly spread, if you remember. And I did all the little rectangles for the days of the week here. I just went over them and, you know, just again did some coloring in. Very therapeutic stuff. And then I went in with another dark green acrylograph pen and wrote out the days of the week and the days of the month on these little squares. And of course, you know, a drop shadow, of course. Once all of the little drop shadows were put in place, in the last little open section on the bottom right of my page, this is normally where I do my little to-do list for the week, so I just did a little title in the same style of title I'm doing for this month, and I'm writing in to-do. And this is just a list of things that I generally have to do this week that I don't have scheduled for a specific day or just things like little reminders for the week. And yeah, I need 
quite a big one these days for every week, so that's why I need like almost like a whole quarter of a page for it. And then of course I decorated all the little empty bits around this double spread with some light blue sparkles and some light teal swirlies everywhere just to match the other spreads that I've done today and again framing the page a little bit making it look more finished and cohesive and like a double spread as opposed to two separate spreads. It just makes them look like siblings <laughs> as opposed to strangers. So yeah, I just did some little swirlies here and there, just really improvising all these little designy bits. It's just fun and carefree bullet journaling, isn't it? Added some more little blue sparkles, why not? just to be safe. <laughs> And that was it for all of my bullet journaling for March and all of my spreads for this month. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me do these. Let me know if you were bullet journaling along with me or doing your planner or anything. Yeah, I'm very excited for the month of March. It's going to be very busy, but very fun. And there's going to be a lot for you guys to see coming from me this month. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.